Hello, Platform Con. It's great to be here. My name is John Nevins, and I'm the engineering lead for the GraphQL platform team at the New York Times. We're actually fortunate to have the investment in a centralized graph team here at the Times, and I'm pleased to share a little bit about our journey as we reinvented our role as a platform team, because it wasn't always that way. Like many folks who front their APIs with GraphQL, our journey started with a single GraphQL service, something we like to call a monograph, and we supported it as a traditional API team. At the Times, we saw a rather strong adoption of GraphQL, so we reached the point where it was time to build on that success and scale the solution. Scaling the contribution model for GraphQL in an organization that is all in on GraphQL was relatively simple from a technology perspective. Gatekeeping of a single API code base for API federation across the enterprise had resulted in serious bottlenecks, so the natural architectural solution for us was to platform our GraphQL offering and introduce a few new components. The first was a new front door through federated GraphQL, which is a single entry point that pulls together GraphQL Im implementations across the organization into a single schema or source of truth known as a super graph, which is, the, which is a concept of federated GraphQL. A super graph describes the composition of a number of cohesive subgraphs or applications that serve portions of the larger graph. The second, a new monograph or standalone GraphQL service with a light self-serve contribution model for those cases where ownership of the data needs to be decoupled from, owner, from ownership of a production service that supplies it. The third piece, which you don't see a fancy blue box for here, is a self-service observability, something we've pro productized in our platform organization so that our customers, or users as it were, can find or generate the insights that inform the decisions they make about performance and debugging their applications. That looks simple enough in a multicolored diagram, but the real work was transforming how our centralized graph team operated on the daily. Reviewing PRs for monograph contributions and keeping up with tier zero support just wasn't going to cut it anymore. To elaborate, I'd like to kick off this slide in one sentence. When we set out to platform GraphQL, we knew if we did our jobs right, we were getting out of the business of developing actual APIs and into the business of delivering a better backbone for shipping those APIs and the data they serve, shortening time to market for product features across the New York Times product bundle. All right, that was a long sentence, so I kind of cheated, but I think you get it. The journey meant making a few fundamental changes to how we work as a team in order to achieve those ends. We're trading gatekeeping for architectural stewardship and playing a lead role in governance of our super graph. We recognize that the integrity of the supergraph and the services that back it is critical to the success of this concept. We're meeting this challenge with a GraphQL stewardship model that allows us to lead the direction of our platform while bringing our GraphQL community along with us. There are three legs to our federated GraphQL stewardship stool. First, we launched what we call a schema working group made up of at least seven different stakeholder areas. These are decision makers, not passive contributors, and they work on the effective shape of the supergraph. Second, we kicked off subgraph partner groups at the product management level, which resemble design partner groups to stay in close touch with the needs of our customers. And third, we're fostering best practices with a GraphQL community of practice, which is a gathering place for GraphQL enthusiasts from front to back at the times to learn, share, and benefit from the input of others. Far-reaching stewardship like that really opens the door for governance opportunities that protect not just the integrity of the graph, but more importantly, the UX of our applications, which depend on low latency and high availability. We're deprecating pure API development for services and tooling that open up contribution to product teams to control their own destiny with confidence. The key to rapid iteration and incremental delivery is minimizing handoffs. And before we started to see success here, you're kind of bound to getting asked onto our roadmap or lobbying for priority of emergent work within the delivery cycle. And that cycle is a six-month period at the times, by the way, that just doesn't scale. As fellow platformists, tell me if this sounds familiar. In a recent planning cycle, there were 34 major roadmap asks. Combine that with shepherding upwards of 150 contributions from the community, and you start to see where the bottlenecks emerge. Through federated GraphQL, domain owners are also code owners for their niche. So product teams can iterate at their own pace on the back of the super graph within their decentralized subgraphs. We pull ourselves out of the loop as a platform team because we have offered a stable platform and self-service tooling. Finally, we'll do less tier zero troubleshooting 
uh, for production issues and escalations because we're offering more tooling for data experts to do that themselves. We do that by continuing to iterate on insights into performance and observability through metrics, tracing, and logging so that when product teams put their backend on our platform, they get the complete picture of how it is behaving. That way, when a request goes into the federated black box and comes out the other side, they can understand for themselves how it was handled along the way. How we do that in detail is a whole other presentation, so I'll keep this moving. Updating the operating model, model really drives the value we get out of moving to a platform-based offering. Sangria is good, delicious even. And for those that don't know, it is also the framework that powers our current GraphQL monograph offering. I would like to begin by ex extending a nod to that Scala-based Sangria-backed GraphQL servers that we have in production today. It scales, it is performant, and while it's not impossible to work with, what I've been talking about here is the next step in our evolution of the use of GraphQL at the New York Times as an API protocol of choice. We realize that the Scala learning curve is real and combined with a gatekeeping model that requires direct interaction with, well, gatekeepers, those two issues can cause development bottlenecks and serious ones. Uh, as a result, while there's a fairly ubiquitous adoption of GraphQL at the Times, the reality is the legacy monograph was just one of many graphs here at the Times. Now, thanks to federated GraphQL, we're pulling all of those graphs together under a cohesive super graph that inherently makes all those APIs available to our client developers through the simplicity of a query. So on our journey towards platform GraphQL, above all, we're emphasizing self-service, as any good platform should. We're trying to take ourselves out of the loop where we can, offering the features, tooling, and services that empower adoption of the GraphQL platform. Things like schema proposals through Apollo Studio, a self-service onboarding process, support for our most common service-to-service -service auth types out of the box, and future scaff scaffolding tools re that really shape our ability to do that. To accomplish those things, we ship early and often, as good Agilists should, and doing so behind tight feedback loops and uh, safeguards. All of this is to say, and this is where we make or save our money on this whole thing, is that the goal is a reduced time to market for actual real product in the hands of our dear readers. Engineering time is expensive and innovation is important to our success as a digital, digital journalism company. If we can offer a platform that does just that, I think we're in a good place. But what about the business? We're under a bit of pressure here in the media space, so how did we deliver federated GraphQL to the business that needed it yesterday and carry that momentum to where we are today and where we're going? We needed to remove the choke point to reduce time to market for new features and applications. This graphic gives the appearance of a linear paved path, but there is quite a bit of concurrency here that supported the value we bring. So I'll keep it simple and walk through things step by step. Early last year, we were well on our way to delivering federated GraphQL backed by Apollo's gateway product. At the time, they had released an improved version under the Apollo router product name. We couldn't just put the rollout of our gateway on hold and wait for the router tech to reach maturity in the industry. We were on the hook to bring a new capability to the organization. So we went with it. We scaled up our federated GraphQL gateway in front of our legacy monograph and cataloged our learnings from that experience to serve our future tech migration. I could talk about the clever mechanism we used in production to support that gradual scale up, but that is a whole other talk. So feel free to catch me sometime and we can dive in. We began onboarding subgraphs to our shiny new supergraph with a focus on those that were serving key business initiatives, bringing value to those areas first. At the same time, we introduced improved tracing in our platform and a self-service guide to accompany those new capabilities to provide insights to our subgraph service owners. At that point, we were really cooking with gas, and the Apollo router product was reaching maturity. So it was time to introduce a support structure through the stewardship model I mentioned earlier. We spun up a new federated GraphQL service backed by Apollo Router and started migrating traffic from our gateway solution. Again, I'll pause to mention a focus on business value in that incremental process. We targeted and are targeting because this is kind of where we are now, the traffic that would bring us improved performance and reduced cloud costs. So let me take a step back and pull it all together. In order to do all of that, we had to make a space to do the work that got us there. And making that space meant changing the way we serve the needs of our customers on the daily. We revamped our intake process to make space for our roadmap while prioritizing the emergent issues of the organization in line with that roadmap so that we could see returns on our engineering investments early in the process. 
we're still on that platform journey and we've lived, laughed, and learned a lot along the way. And look, there's a ton of stuff to unpack here and only so much we can do here in this 15-minute window. I love to geek out on this stuff, so let's connect, either here at the conference or otherwise. Thank you, and we'll see you around.